Paul has come to the Highlands to find out about Kenneth's father, Donald Mackenzie. I've travelled around Scotland a lot, but the furthest north I've ever been up until today was Aberdeen. Now I'm considerably more north, so this is the northest I've ever been in my entire life. Look at that! You've got to be kidding me. When you think of west coast of Scotland, you think of rugged mountains, lochs, and that's exactly what we have here. It's just one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to in my life, and I've traveled quite a lot. And the fact that finding out that my ancestors come from this area, it sort of makes you think, okay, because I love mountains, I like being near the sea, and this, this place seems to be ticking every single box. Coincidence? Maybe. But I could have come from a, a big city, I don't know. I'm dying to see where Donald lived. So this is Pool U. Not a bad place, is it? There could have been many people living here. They're scattered around. Beautiful, but remote, to say the very least. Peaceful place. You can't hear anything. I love that. Paul is meeting historian Dr Ben Thomas. So this is the modern plot of land, which was also Donald's plot of land back in the day. And I think you just see nicely the delineation of the crop with the hedges on either side here. There's a real good sense, I think, of how small this patch of land actually was. And how kind of quite rocky and undulating some of this land actually was as well. It's not that big, is it? I expected it to be much bigger and incorporate that hill over there. I, th I think it's a really good indication that crofts were actually very small. So you're looking at the, the fence line there coming down. It's about an acre, isn't it? It's, again, very, very small. You've got a very clear sense that, yes, there would be space for cattle, yes, there would be space for a, a small amount of crops, but really, this is it. Wow. And I think there's a great pressure on crofts or the crofting lifestyle Crofters have to look elsewhere for sources of income. It's me thinking it would be like swathes of land going up with rolling hill, and it was this. What's really strange is looking at looking at that view there. My ancestors would certainly have had that exact view. Yeah. And that that's what it probably hasn't changed in all that time. Um, that freaks me out a little bit, if I'm honest. You look at that, and you think they probably woke up in the morning. Looked out, saw that of your and I'm looking at exactly the same thing nearly 200 years later. That is odd, <laughs> very strange. So you mentioned that uh, crofters like Donald would have had other jobs. Um, what sort of jobs are you thinking about? Well, I mean, a crofter could have done a number of occupations. They could have fished, they could have worked as a labourer. But Donald himself actually did something very unique. And I think we should go and have a look at that just now. All right, fair enough. So, Paul, I would like to show you this document here, which is the estate's rental records. And we can see this is Donald here. Don Mackenzie, post. What do you think post means? He's a postman. Well, not just a postman, but he was actually a post runner. Well, what the job of the post runner was, was to deliver the post both by walking and by running. Right. So. Poor bloke. So he had to... Uh, how far, I mean, where's... What area are we looking at here? Well, Donald ran the post between Pool U and a place called Dingwall, and I can show you on the map here. So here we have Pool U. Yeah. And here we have Dingwall. You've got to be kidding. No, so you can see that that's... A he ran a marathon every day. 60 miles between the west coast of Pool U and the east coast of Dingwall. He crosses the good part of the country there. 
and I, I, he nearly goes to Inverness to deliver post to deliver post every week and he would cover that distance in a course of about three days wow that's incredible every week every week and back and back so it's 120 miles every week and we know um, at the time that Donald was doing this, he was in his 40s. In his 40s? In his 40s by this time. So you can imagine... He's, he's a bit like me, uh, to be honest. You so know, a bit like, fit. A bit like you every, Absolutely. every week, 120 <laughs> miles just down oh, yeah. there. I, I, I live down in Kent and I often think, do you know what, I'm going to go for a bit of a run to London. Do you know how long he did that for? Well, he certainly did that for at least a decade, probably longer. Um, so we're talking an incredibly fit man. Here. And the reason we brought you to this particular spot is because the other side of the lock here, this was the route that Donald took to deliver the posts. So you can see how rocky, precipitous this, these cliff faces are. So did he run along the, 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 the coast or did he hit the, the top and run across the He peaks? would be running along the coast. Um, but there's a formation known as Bull's Rock here. And at times he'd be scrambling, if not climbing himself. Donald's job was vital. Running the post to and from isolated communities was the only way to stay in touch. The first male coaches had been introduced around 20 years earlier, in 1784, but horses needed feeding and stabling, making them too expensive for the remote Gerloch route. So the post was delivered on foot, with Donald one of the first ever post runners. The really important thing about this post route at this time was that he was carrying the, all the mails for not just the Gaelic area, not just Pull U, but for Lewis, the island of Lewis as well. So this is a guy with the mails for 30,000 people on his back every week. He was some sort of superhero. I mean, to do that, I mean, I'd like to see someone do it now. I mean, uh, I would say me, you know, if I'm honest, but I'm pushing 50 now and I don't think I'm really up for it, but that to carry that sort of weight and to do that run every week for over a decade in his 40s is frankly staggering. Well, we do actually have a good description of Donald's post-run here in this book. This is a book that was written in the 1880s and it remembers life in Pulley and in Gerlach. Our only letter carrier was one of my father's, Sir Hector's, attaches, little Duncan. The writer misremembers that he says Duncan when he actually does mean Donald. A bit of kilted Indian rubber. It's a contemporary expression meaning kind of tough or bendy. So I think it's a really good kind of evocative description of Donald's kind of quite sprightly. Who, with a sheepskin knapsack on his back to keep his dispatches dry, for Macintosh waterproof had not been dreamed of then. Dreamed. Wow. Left the West on Monday, got the 60 miles done on Wednesday, and returning on Thursday, Del delivered up his mail to my father on the Saturday and was ready to trip off east next Monday. Doing his 120 miles every week, I never heard of his being a day off work in many a year. It doesn't stop, does it? He's just going bang, 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 bang. Sunday, the day of rest, would be the only day that Donald wouldn't be working. He must have been fit as a flea. Yep. Dear me. And one thing that we do know about Donald was that he did live to an incredibly long age as well. Uh, we pick him up in the 1841 census and he's into his 80s by that point. So he's incredibly long lived. So there is, his genetic structure is such that he's so fit. Yeah. He lives to his 80s in that in sort of period as well. Exactly. So the old ones are good for you. Oh, yeah, yes. to the DNA. <laughs> I'm going to go and have a whiskey. <laughs> I was really looking forward to coming to Pulieu, not only to see my great, 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 great grandfather's croft, where he lived, where the family lived, and the views that he saw, but to find out also that he was a, he was a postman, but he used to run the post from over there, about three miles, all the way across, tracking around the lock, all the way to the other side of Scotland. What a bloke! This was his backdrop for most of his life. Amazing. Before this, I knew nothing about my ancestors and very little about my granddad. But now, 
I've got something to hang my hat on. I know all about my granddad's war, which was incredible, and I know about my ancestors in this particular branch of the family that takes me back to the highlands of Scotland, the Mackenzies. And to be here, part of it all, and know it is magic.